hey guys down here in the gun dungeon today got a good video lined up we're going to be taking a look at the 10 millimeter and the 357 magnum so we've got 158 grain xtp loaded to the hotter end of, end of the spectrum and a 200 grain xtp in the 10 millimeter again loaded to the hotter end of the spectrum We'll run these over the chronograph, give you an idea of what kind of velocities we're looking at. Now, one of the things you all may have noticed is four and a half inch barrel, XDM. And then the lowly three inch 686 plus. And everybody's gonna say, oh, well, that's not fair. The 10 millimeter has an inch and a half advantage on the barrel length. Not necessarily. Let me show you what. We'll show clear. Whenever a semi-auto is measuring out the barrel, the chamber is included. So when this four and a half inch barrel includes this entire length of this chamber. So technically you've only got this much barrel. Cause like I said, the round is setting in here. The, the bullet's starting out right here. So it's the same concept as having your cylinder loaded in your revolver. So you can see that's clear as well. So when your round's loaded in your cylinder for a revolver, this is the only part that's measured. So that's a three inch barrel from here to here. Doesn't count the, the length of your chamber. So when you actually take them apart and look, see if I can get this lined up here and line up the front of the chambers, there's really very, very little difference between a four and a half inch barrel semi-auto 10 and a three inch barrel 357 Magnum. And that's why I chose these to, I feel like that's actually one of the more fair representations of what that, the round is doing. Now, granted it may change or if you had a six inch barrel 357 versus a six inch barrel 10 millimeter. Yeah, it may, may change everything. But today we're gonna look at at the shorter length, something a little more manageable to carry, which is what both of these guns have been used for me in the past is woods carry and black bear area while I'm crossbow hunting or whatever. But <clears throat> like I said, we'll run some chronograph, get the results from that, and then we'll hit some ballistics gel with both of these rounds, see how they do. Okay, first up, gonna be 10 millimeter, 200 grain, XTP. Let's see what kind of velocities we get. One thousand two hundred sixty. One thousand two hundred thirty nine. One thousand two hundred twenty two. One thousand two hundred fifty. One thousand. 249 and there is our five shot average for a 200 grain xtp 10 millimeter four and a half inch barrel all right next up three inch 686 with 158 grain 357 magnum hornady xtp One thousand one hundred fifteen. One thousand two hundred thirty eight. One thousand one hundred eighty two. One thousand one hundred fifty eight. One thousand one hundred eighty seven. And there is our five shot average from the hundred and fifty eight grain three fifty seven magnum. All right, guys, as you can see here, ten millimeter pushing a two hundred grain bullet, average of one thousand two hundred forty four feet per second. That comes out to six hundred and eighty seven foot pounds of energy. 357 Magnum, 158 grain bullet, going 1,176 feet per second. That comes out to 485 foot-pounds of energy. 
Now, energy is not the end all be all. We have to take into consideration sectional density and things of that nature, what the bullets are designed to do at those velocities. So stick around for the ballistics gel test and let's see how they actually perform. Uh, so I'm kind of doing two videos at once here with this, this block, uh, trying to get my money's worth out of these things. They ain't cheap. So what I've done is I've turned around our catch block from the 6.5 Grendel test. And there's two bullets in here, but there's very little damage to the block. Unless we hit the bullets, the test will be, that won't be, won't be a compromise. So first up will be 200 grain XTP 10 millimeter. Okay, 10 millimeter, 200 grain XTP opens up quick. You can see the wound track there. Traveling down, traveling down. And there it sets, a 16 inch block. So it's right at 17 inches of penetration. You can see the bullet looks pretty good. Pretty good expansion. A lot of base left to drive through. Okay, there's our 158 grain 357 Magnum on the far side. You can see mild expansion, not as much as the 10 millimeter gave us, but it's also a larger diameter bullet to start with. A little bit of fragmentation right there, traveling down. Their rests are 10 millimeter right here. As you can see, our wound track for the 357 is still going farther, farther, farther. There it sets. We are coming in right around the 23 and a half mark. That is pretty good expansion or pretty good penetration from an expanding handgun round. And you can see the bullet is expanded. We'll dig them out and I'll show you a closer view of that. That's pretty good penetration. So there they are. 10 millimeter on your left, 357 Magnum on your right. You can see the 10 millimeter, it started out larger, but it did expand more than the 357 did. But as I said in the, uh, the data clip, don't count out the 357 Magnum just based on velocities and energy. If you're looking for penetration, that one is, that, that sectional density in that round and that bullet design, that's definitely your performer. So back in the gun dungeon, 10 millimeter, 357 head to head. So some surprising results. Uh, just looking at the chronograph data and uh, the energy velocity, 10 millimeter was, was beating the 357 Magnum in comparable barrel length quite substantially until we hit the gel block and if you're looking for penetration for you know bear defense uh black bear defense i would never recommend either one of these for grizzly bear defense but black bear defense uh hog hunting things of that nature you're wanting some penetration sectional density in the 158 grain bullet 357 magnum it really gives us an, an edge on penetration with this bullet with this particular bullet from hornady xtp may get totally different results if we were to load them both with gold dots or HSTs or or some sort of a, a non-expanding projectile that would definitely change the ball game. But just these two bullets in comparison, penetration, and here you got more expansion, more devastation on the front side of the wound track. So depending on what you're looking for, they kind of do two different things. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys.